Hello and welcome to Holly and Martin Do Road Safety. Martin and I work for Dufferin County Council's road safety team and we are here to hopefully provide you with some useful advice for life on the road. Good afternoon, Martin. Hi, Holly. Today, we are joined by Environmental Health Officer Andy Coleman to discuss the importance of having clean air in our environment and what you guys at home can do to help. Hi, Andy. Hi, Holly. Hi, Martin. Hello there. Yeah, Andy, we've known each other for a couple of years and we've worked in schools together on the anti-idling campaigns. But I have to say that uh, I don't know a great deal about, about the rest of your job. Can you just give us an idea of what you do? Yes, yeah, sure, Martin. Um, I mean, environmental health is, is a profession, is really wide ranging. Um, I've been employed for Ipswich Borough Council for over 11 years now. The first two years I spent time in the food safety department, which involved conducting food hygiene inspections of businesses, investigating food complaints in, in cases of infectious disease. I also spent some time in the housing department for around seven years doing housing inspections and administering grants amongst other things for disabled people but now I mainly deal with air quality um, and I also manage to waste enforcement officers so as a profession environmental health is, is there's a lot going for it, you know it's a, it's a big area but my day-to-day -day job now mainly includes monitoring air quality in Ipswich at various locations um, commenting on planning applications from an air quality point of view and also just things like what we're doing today with this podcast, just trying to educate people um, about air quality, really. So, yeah, quite a range in things that I get involved with. So, Andy, why is it important that we keep our air clean? Well, air pollution in this, in this country, well, in, in the world in general, along with climate change, is one of the biggest threats to our health over everything, really, in the world. Yeah. Um, and if we eliminate a type of uh, particulate called particulate 2.5, by, by doing that, that's got a bigger impact on people's life expectancy than, than eliminating passive smoking or, or even road traffic accidents. Yeah. Um, in, in the UK, I believe it's estimated that the current stats are saying that there's around 36,000 people in the UK die from air pollution every year. Um, really, and I that, didn't yeah, know that. and the death isn't necessarily attributed to to air pollution itself. It's to do with other impacts. So it may well be yeah. that air pollution makes the likelihood of you getting cancer or asthma yeah. worse, stroke, that, that sort right. of thing. So um, it can worsen it's, its health conditions. Yes, e exactly, and it can cause things like low birth weight as well, premature, premature yeah. birth. So, yeah, it can it can make a lot of conditions worse or contribute. Yeah contribute to our conditions basically yeah thanks i'm going to show my my age here because uh, as a child in a northern industrial town i remember smoke belch belching out of not only house house chimneys but also works chimneys but things have changed over the years what do you say the main things these days that affect our air quality i, I would have said predominantly well in the uk and in the world in general will be issues to do with nitrogen dioxide in in this country that's pretty much the main pollutant that that councils up and down the country are concerned with and that's associated with things like road transport so cars and delivery vehicles we can also get um, emissions from boilers too another main pollutant that we've got concerns with in this country comes from a range of places. It can come from natural sources, so it can come from things like sea spray. It can also come from the use of wood stoves, open fires, the dust from brake pads in cars, and that, that, that pollutant is called particulate matter. One thing also as well that's becoming increasingly more researched and known about is indoor air quality. The main sort of pollutants associated with that can be known as volatile organic compounds or, or box, and and they can come in products like paint, varnishes, hairsprays, cleaning products, that, that sort of thing, really. So what my mum used to say, get out and get some fresh air, is actually good advice. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Are there any particular parts? I know you work out of Ipswich Borough Council. Mm -hmm. Is there any particular parts of Ipswich that get badly affected? Yes, yeah, I mean... As, as I've said, with regards to the nitrogen dioxide, that's that's mainly associated with traffic, uh, road yeah. traffic. So 
unsurprisingly, where we've got problems is where we've got heavy, slow-moving road traffic, really. So yeah. in Ipswich, we've got five areas of particular concern. I can go through where they are if you like. Yeah, yeah, problem. please do. So they're basically through the gyratory system um, up near the waterfront. We've got another area of concern along Crown Street, the main sort of route through town. Uh, we've got one where near Chevalier Street, Brantford Road, and one along Norwich Road and St, St. Matthew Street, and also yeah. sort of going up the bottom of Woodbridge Road and, and St. Helen Street, if you know where those areas are. So mm-hmm. unsurprisingly, they're the bits of town where, you know, if you've been around town in rush hour, they tend to be the bits which get more congested. So unsurprisingly, we've got they're, they're the areas where we've got more problems. Um, sure. In, in but also, mind, Andy, that's where there's a number of schools in those places. So would you say it's better for parents to stick their kids in the car to protect them or better to actually walk or cycle? Well, act, actually, you know, if they can walk or cycle, that's great because what will happen is that will lower the pollution that everyone experiences around the town, also, you know, making them sort of healthy and active. Because yeah. Because they, you know, they get they're walking all the site and they're getting some exercise in. And actually, what people don't necessarily know is that pollution can actually build up within a in a car. So on a hot day like today, where it's thirty odd degrees and people have got the aircon on, the yeah. pollution can actually build up in the car because the aircon will suck in all the air from outside, oh, and, yeah. and then it actually builds up within the car. So it can actually oh. be better for you to walk or, or cycle. Than, yeah. than actually sit in your car what i would say to do with that as well is if possible if people are walking or, or cycling say to school for example try and also think about what roads you use to get there so if you can use quieter roads away from the busier traffic that will also help as well in terms of protecting your own health against grieving in, in emissions from, from busy yeah. roads. So uh, I think we touched on this last week with our interview with Carl, the closing certain roads to try and make the air cleaner. Yes, that that's it. I believe Suffolk County Council are doing a lot of work on that at the moment. I, you may know more than me, Martin and Holly, on this, but I yeah. think <laughs> they've just submitted the, the second bid funding from the government to put in some some additional measures where they're looking at altering the road layout so i'm hoping to sort of touch base if you like with with carl and his colleagues soon just to see how how that's going and how successful they are with that and you know the status of their their current bid Mm. so just thinking say five or ten years ahead andy how do you see things in the future how are things going to change i think air quality will generally get better because i mean the the way government policy tends to be sort of steering towards, if you, if you take the uh, clean air strategy that was relatively recently released, is you now they're looking at banning the sale of petrol and diesel cars by 2025. So I think naturally pollution levels will continue to fall as we get you know better, more efficient cars, be- better, cleaner technology. And I think you know taking what's happening at the moment with coronavirus, I think people generally are becoming more aware. Of, of the issue of air pollution. I mean, when we were in full lockdown, I had a few people say to me, oh, this is, this is nice. So, you know, I'm able to walk and cycle more. Or I feel I feel safe and now there's less cars on the road. And Global Action Plan, who organised National Clean Air Day, which is on the 8th of October, they've, they've conducted a recent survey nationally and they found that 72% of people think clean air is even more important now because of coronavirus and how it can affect people's lungs. So, yeah, yeah with, with people sort of realising that it is an issue and becoming more aware of it, I, I'd like to think that everyone can work together and, um, you know, make their own sensible choices and the government plan their part as well, that, that we can all work together to make air quality better for, for everyone. Yeah, I've heard a lot of um, people mention the word idling to me. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything that people can do to limit their idling? And could you just explain quickly what it is, please? Yeah, I- idling essentially is where people may drive a car but leave the engine running. So, right. I mean, a lot of the technology now um, is moving towards the stop-start engine. So I, d- yeah. I don't know, you know whether you both drive, but cars can often, yeah. at traffic lights, just cut off, so it eliminates it. But with... With older vehicles, it may well be that the engine has just left running. So, and then that can cause 
solution as as well. And when you're sort of stop and start and heavy acceleration, that's that's when you get it. So one thing I'd advise is maybe sort of, you know if you have got an older car and and you're stopped anywhere for for a period of time, consider switching your engine off and and you know also if it's safe to do so because that will help improve air quality too. Myself and my colleagues across Suffolk last year launched the Suffolk Idling Action Campaign um, where we were trying to educate people on on that and myself and Martin we went to a couple of schools didn't we last oh I remember that yes to try and sort of educate parents and and children on the issue as well. So at school drop-off asking parents and guardians just to switch their engine off would make a difference? Yes yes definitely I mean particularly with children as well because they're lower to the ground you know they're closer to an exhaust and exhaust fumes so yeah by switching just doing the simple thing of switching your engine off can make can make a great difference in, in helping to improve people's health. Well, thank you ever so much for joining us, Andy. That's been really helpful. I've, lear- I've learned some valuable stuff myself. Um, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions about the topics discussed today, please visit our website, suffolkroadsafe.com. And if you'd like to email us, if you have any questions, it's suffolkroadsafe at suffolk.gov.uk. And I'll leave some useful links in the description box for you to have a look through as well. Thank you. Thanks, Holly. Thank